In part 1 of the CRC, we have seen how sender creates the CRC. In part 2 of the cyclic redundancy check, we will see how the receiver detects the errors using the CRC technique. Let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we are going to understand how the receiver detects the error using CRC technique. Let's take the same example what we have taken in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we took this example with the data block 100 and 100 with the divisor 1101. And we solved the problem using polynomial long division and we found out that the CRC is 001 and the data that is transmitted is 100100001. So where 100100 is the actual data and 001 is the CRC and this is what the message that is transmitted. Now let's say this transmitted message is received by the receiver without any transmission errors. It means this is what the information that is transmitted. Let the same data be received by the receiver without transmission errors. Now we will be focusing on how the receiver comes to know that there are no errors in the transmission. So to do this, what the receiver does? He takes the data what he has received. So this is what the data that he has received. And this is what the divisor. As I already mentioned in the previous lecture that the divisor is common for both the sender and the receiver. The protocol decides the divisor. And normally this divisor will be a polynomial expression. There are standard polynomials. I have taken 1101 as the divisor. In the previous lecture, the CRC was created with this divisor only. And hence the same divisor must be used by the receiver in order to detect whether there is an error or not. To do this, the same polynomial division Whatever the receiver receives, just put it here and the divisor here. As usual, the same polynomial division. 1101, 1 times 1101. And just divide. Let's ignore this part. When we do this division, for same input it will be 0. For same input here also 0. And for different input it will be 1 because XOR operation we are performing. So the answer for this is 100. Zero, zero. So it is 100. Zero, zero. And let's bring the next bit. So 0 will take this place. Again, we will divide 1101 1 times. It's 1101. 1, 1. And the result is 101. 1. Let's bring the next bit. That is 0 here. Again, 1101 1, 1, 1 time. It's 1101. 1, 1. And the intermediate result is 111. 1, 1. Let's bring the next bit. It's 0. And 1 time. It's 1101. 1, 1. And the result here is 0, 1, 1. Let's bring the next 0 here. Now if you observe, it's starting with 0, so we are required to use a 0 and bring the next one. And I'll simplify this problem by just putting 0 at the top and bringing the next digit 1 and doing the same operation. 1101, 1 times, it's 1101 and the final result is 0. When the receiver gets all zeros as the remainder, the receiver understands that there are no transmission errors and the receiver accepts the data what it was sent. And this is how the receiver concludes that there are no errors during transmission. I hope now you are clear with how the receiver detects the error. If we get a non-zero value here, it means there are errors in the transmission. To understand things better, I recommend you to solve the homework problem. Just take this homework problem. Suppose we want to transmit the message 11001001. And we want to protect it from errors using the CRC polynomial and the polynomial expression is given that is x cube plus 1. Use the polynomial long division to determine the message that should be transmitted. So sender have to create the CRC and append that CRC with this message and transmit that message. When the receiver gets this message and the CRC without any errors, when he does the same polynomial division, the remainder will be obviously zero. It means there are no transmission errors. But the question is not complete. Just see this carefully. Corrupt the leftmost third bit of the transmitted message. That is, if this is the message, the leftmost third bit, this is the left hand side, and the leftmost third bit should be corrupted. It means when we see one here, it should become zero. Or if we see zero here, it must be one. So in this case, 0 will be made as 1. So deliberately corrupt the leftmost third bit of the transmitted message and show that the error is detected by the receiver using CRC technique. After you deliberately make the error in the transmitted message, 
the receiver does the same polynomial long division operation but the remainder of that operation done by the receiver will not be zero if the remainder of the division performed by the receiver is a non zero value obviously there are errors and that's it about the crc technique i hope now you know how to detect error using crc technique in the previous lecture we understood how crc code is generated and in this lecture we know how this crc technique is used to detect the errors i hope you guys enjoyed the session and thank you for watching